Hey everybody! Do you know where we are? Because we're not sure. What happened with Restream, the program where I do go all, live all the different places, so we're just going live on YouTube. Cheryl is rapidly trying to update those links for you. Um, it's a cozy day here in the Hester household, or at least there was before Restream <laughs> broke. But like Lisa said, it's the internet and things happen. And yeah. it's a very kind of dreary day, feeling cozy. Yeah, is it? And you're in San Francisco? Mm hmm Yeah, dreary day, raining. Uh, it's not raining yet, and it almost looks like it could snow, but it's not warm enough. And uh, I've been wearing my little cozy um, mama fleece <laughs> all weekend. I love your weekend. fleece. I love it. It almost looks Chris like holiday. It holiday is Christmasy. Fleece. Oh. It, <laughs> <laughs> These are little bulbs and snowflakes. I figured the snowflakes were appropriate, and I'm wearing it in solidarity for all the people who, like, had this crazy cold weather. But I also want everyone to know who's like, you've been going live in that for a few days. I washed it last <laughs> night. It's brand new and fluffy, and I showered just for you, Lisa. Just for you. Oh, thank you. You know, well, I'm, gl I'm happy to say that my hair is clean. <laughs> because I washed my hair for you. <laughs> and I, I want to tell you that I'm all about cozy clothes, like clo cozy clothes win. If you work from home, there's no other way. <laughs> exactly. Well, and the thing is, is when I put it on, because I was like, oh, I want to make this coffee, but I don't know what's going on. What's the matter? Okay, here, just come here. Just come on. She's panicking. Cheryl's panicking. So uh, I know whenever like there's a lot of pressure because we're live, right? Yeah, you know, I don't feel the pressure because the thing yeah, is, is people will find it eventually. And if not, they yeah, will just share worried. it out everywhere. Um, exactly. I, I know people are looking for it and people are probably emailing, which is why Cheryl is getting panicky. Oh. <laughs> um, but one of the things that you guys are, unless you've been hiding in a hole the past few days, you know that it's the ultimate vegan health and weight loss bundle. And all of us are pretty much probably live almost round the clock because it's an international thing. And uh, Lisa Rice is here to talk to us about oatmeal. And we, my people love oatmeal. And I wrote a whole Yay. book just on oatmeal called Outrageous Oats. So, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> so tell well, us a little bit. Of, oh, I'm so sorry, but uh -huh. tell us a no, little sorry, bit about go. yourself, your background, for people who may not know who you are yet. Okay, uh, I am. Um, I currently work as a health mentor, health coach with. Uh, Dr. Matthew Letterman and Dr. Alona Day, who are the physicians from Forks Over Knives. Ooh. I worked with them for six years. Yeah, I worked for them uh, for six years at the Whole Foods Medical Wellness Center as a health coach there. And um, prior to that, I had taught cooking for a very long time, for decades. I started eating plant-based when I was in college. That was a long time ago. That was the 80s. <laughs> and, um, but, um, you know, what I wanted to say is that when I used to teach cooking classes before I started coaching, I would teach all these complicated things like how to make vegan cheese or lasagna or all the, you know, because the people who were coming were people who liked to cook. But when I started coaching, especially at the clinic, like there were so many people who don't cook, they're intimidated by, intimidated by it. So I really had to start teaching recipes that were super simple. And just like some of them don't even require cooking. That's what our bundle um, item is. It's uh, Lauren from Well Elephant and I made it. It's, it's I don't cook and I cook little for people who are intimidated about getting in the kitchen. And um, and it's really fun. And, and so my whole mission is just to tell people it's so easy, right? It doesn't have to be complicated. If you want to make it complicated, you can. There's so many amazing vegan recipes out there, vegan meats, vegan cheeses. But really, on the day to day, just keep it simple and don't, you know, just have your pantry and your fridge, fridge and your freezer well stocked, and you can always throw something together. That's, That's pretty my spiel. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about, a little more about like what you have in the bundle because you're making something today from the bundle, right? I'm actually Ooh. not. I realize oh. that I'm not making something from the bundle. <laughs> 
I'm so <laughs> sorry. You can tell that I have not looked through all oh, no, no. 120 of the things. Oh, yay, people are here. So we are no, really funny. live. Well, Yay. I just want to make um, Lauren, Lauren in our in our ebook. She has this fantastic recipe for these noodles. It's almost like a pad thai with a peanut sauce. And I was planning to make that, but I'm like, you know, I don't really want to make that at eight in the morning. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm gonna make what I get up and eat every day, which is like either hot oatmeal or overnight oats with a lot lots of fun flavorings. You know, because people think oatmeal and they're like. You know, like, I don't want oatmeal. Like, I want something with flavor. And the truth is, it has so much flavor because you just put all kinds of fun toppings on it, right? It's Oatmeal is amazing. And I think what I loved when you, per, when you kind of talked about doing this topic is because uh -huh. I do make overnight oats a lot in the summer because I forget. I, in the summer when it's super hot, it's like eating pudding and it's, yes. oh my, it's my favorite. It's like dessert for breakfast, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people. Like I love fruit and like sweet flavors. It kind of gives me a boost. Um, yeah. But I, we all, including me, forget that you can make overnight oats and heat them up. Uh, well, that's what I was just going to say. So it's cold in San Francisco right now. So every morning I take my jar, I, I um, pour it into my bowl and I stick it in the microwave. Easy peasy. Then you don't even have to stand at the stove and cook oatmeal, right? It's awesome because it's very similar to like, I do a lot of times I'll do um, a batch of baked oats. I made some. Mm, lemon, I love um, that. Meyer Tell lemon. me your recipe. Um, Ooh. You know, with like, usually I put in some flax seeds and most of the time I do rolled oats these days, though I used to always do steel cut oats. It just depends, like steel cut oats are great in the slow cooker. Yes. And they get all creamy. Um, I do cook mm -hmm. them in my Instant Pot too. And I don't know if you know Jill Newson now. She's kind of a big Instant I Pot. I know Jill. I know Jill from when I was little because her sister Andrea and I were best friends when we were about eight and nine years old. So I've known That's Jill for a long time. <laughs> awesome. I love Jill. Every once in a while, Jill will yeah. like email me something. So like we end up being conference buddies out in the world. Oh, I love that. But her and I both cook our still cut oats. I think it's three minutes if I mm -hmm. off the top of my head this morning. Um, and some people hate that. It's too chewy. So I like to get the chewy oats out of the Instant Pot the creamy oats out of the slow cooker and some people are like it's mush it's horrible and it's like sometimes it's just the cooking method that's not right for you yeah yeah there's so many different ways i i remember um and i haven't done it in a long time because i haven't used my slow cooker ever since i've had an instapot but um i used to just put the steel cut oats and all everything in it before i went to bed and when I woke up and, you know, throughout the night, if I had to get up and use the restroom, I could smell it, you know, because oh. it makes cinnamon and stuff, right? It is and, kind uh, of magical. Just, it is. And then you wake up and you've got this warm, cozy breakfast and the house smells wonderful. <laughs> oh, that's, so many ways. That is so awesome. And I hate to do this to you, but I'm going to have you reintroduce yourself now that people are coming on and doing the things. Also, I'm going to reiterate that I have washed my cozy, cozy little thing I've been wearing for days because I feel like it needs to be said out loud and I took a shower. Lisa and I discussed this, she washed her hair. So we are clean just for you We're guys. Clean. Think about that. So Lisa, just um, if you don't mind saying it all over again, just for people who may not know you yet because you're awesome, yeah. let's tell them Aww. all the things. This is so fun, Kathy. Uh, you're such a great host. <laughs> um, okay, so my name is Lisa Rice, and I'm a senior health mentor, or health coach, with Dr. Matthew Letterman and Dr. Alona Polde, who uh, you may know from Forks Over Knives. They were the physicians in Forks Over Knives. Um, we just were launching this week. It's a crazy week because we're do I'm doing the bundle, and we're launching We Heal, which is their new healthcare model this week. And um, it's a virtual model. And so uh, it's, it's been a crazy week. But anyway, uh, I worked for them for six years at Whole Foods. Um, we opened the Austin Whole Foods Medical and Wellness Center. I was one of the health coaches there. So I've known them a long time. And before that, I had other careers. <laughs> I don't need to go into that. But I have been cooking plant-based since I was in college. So um, I've been cooking for a long time and have just evolved into teaching people how to make super easy 
plant-based and vegan food because there's a lot of intimidation about changing and you really don't have to change that much, right? Spices, you know, a lot of the things you have in your pantry, you can make a meal. So that's kind of my mission. Like, don't make it complicated. Let's make it really easy. I love that. And I think, because it's bundle week and I'm going to just kind of mention that again. All the people who are coming in are like, we know it's bundle week. We've been watching people 24 <laughs> seven. And, Please and buy I, the bundle. <laughs> well, I always say it's kind of like vegan Christmas. And we've got this, all these events around here and that if you've already bought the bundle, then you can still get to meet all these new people, decide if their communities are perfect for you. It's great on the contributor side. So most of the time when I do plant-based chats, you know, I'm introducing you to cool people that I know because I know all the cool people. And now I get to meet more cool people <laughs> to introduce you to, like Lisa. Lisa and I have talked for like what? 15 minutes and now I'm like, let's go have dinner. Let's go do something fun. We're like buddies now, <laughs> totally. I love it. I wish we were in the same city. Oh, that would be so awesome. And people, tons of people are over the side saying hi and talking about oat groats and just, you know. Ooh, oat groats. Oh, and um, Tracy Reese is asking, how did you eat plant-based in a college dorm? My son's college has a bunch of crap in the cafeteria. <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't live in the dorm. I went to college a long time ago. That was in the 80s. And um, <laughs> I lived in an apartment in New York, a fifth floor walk up. And I, you know, I didn't, I, I made simple stuff. I made like pasta with garlic and oil. That's like, I lived on that because I was a student living in New York, going to school. Um, and there were a lot of uh, Korean uh, salad bars on my way to NYU. So I would go and get, you know, they always had like marinated tofu and they had, there were just so many like easy things to get, believe it or not, back then. Um, and, you know, I just made super simple stuff for myself. I think I bought like back then the only like vegan meat they had was a veggie dog, like a, I can't remember who made it. So I would sometimes get those, but I was really macrobiotic. So I had to, that's kind of what was my deep dive. I had to learn, it was for health reasons. I had to learn how to make brown rice and beans and all these things. Um, so in a dorm, I don't know, Kathy, you can speak to this, but I would have an Instapod. Yeah, around now, that. an instant pot or slow cooker, again, like I try to, kind of the way you think about simple foods, because I think about some things can be simple and some things are craving based. So like sometimes mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go a lot further and put more effort into it if it satisfies a craving that I'm having to make it healthier. Yeah. Like we made um, a pecan oat meatloaf. It was so good. And mm, I made another, I made a double batch. So Oh, it was so good, but it was all, yeah. there's no oil in there. The pecans just give it kind of that meaty, kind of mm. dark flavor, and I use some mushroom powder. But so the same that way, there's so different good. things. Like, I'm not gonna make that every yeah. day. I'm not gonna clean no, my food no. processor up every day. But Yeah, well, it, I think with the college dorm, I don't know, like, it depends, because I know a lot of them don't let you have, like, cooking, you know, they might not let you have an uh, Instapot. So really, the thing is to look for things you can assemble which in our book that we have for the bundle, I don't cook, I cook little. There are several recipes where you just get a can, a can of refried beans and you can get this all at like Trader Joe's. I'm like the walking ad for Trader Joe's. But you get some beans, you get some sort of tortillas, you get some salsa, you can just assemble food and it's healthy. So I wanna tell, was it Tammy? That um, if you look at that, and I'm sure in the bundle, like I, there's a, over a hundred things and a lot of them are geared towards super, super simple. My friend Lauren Burnick with Well Elephant, if you go to her site, she has um, her ACE plant-based cooking and she has really great tips for eating out and how to do it. Um, and uh, and on our website at the weheal.com website in the resources, I have like a shopping list and how to eat out and a bunch of recipes. So just, you know, it's, it's, it's not that hard and um, it really depends on, you know, your environment too, like if, if you're in a college dorm. And it's true. And I was just gonna say too, like, if you're, I remember being very poor in grad school. Like, like I was vegetarian then and like once a week we'd put our money together because I cooked for everyone and had people bring ingredients. We'd like get like a quarter pound of cheese. And that was very exciting because it was a Mexican <laughs> night. Um, 
So, <laughs> so if you can't get an Instant Pot or it's not quite your birthday or Christmas yet, um, <laughs> which I'm always like, put those expensive appliances. And also another yes. tip is if you're on Amazon.com on your computer, go up to the top where you can click a, a drop down that says like books and stuff. There's Amazon Warehouse. Lisa, do you know about Amazon Warehouse? I don't. I'm learning so much from you, Kathy. Please tell me. Okay, so I love <laughs> I love saving money and I love thrifting and stuff. So you can oh, get me too. Amazon returns. So you can get usually an instant pot duo for like sixty bucks all year round, and maybe there's a little dent in the side. My oh, um I need to do that. Fancy Breville food processor. I got half price on the warehouse, oh. and it had a. It was supposed to have scratch damage inside the thing that holds the blades. In between, there's a little scratch on the plastic that I wouldn't have noticed had I not been looking for a scratch everywhere. Okay, so, this is a whole other episode talking about thrifting and getting this stuff cheap. Uh, we have to do an episode about this because I want to tell you something. You know, I'm in San Francisco right now, and I'm in the middle of a move from Austin. Our entire apartment, an entire apartment has been furnished for free from the local Buy Nothing group. Uh, I am not yeah, kidding buy you. Buy Nothing groups are amazing. And in fact, we have, um, we have a Bull City trades group because um, Durham, North Carolina is called the Bull City. And there's Bull yeah. City shares. And so, because we're going through a bunch of stuff too. And so like at s some point when I'm doing like, all the plant milk makers, then I have 10 plant milk makers at some point, <laughs> and I don't keep them all. I either give them to friends right. or I give them to people who are just moving in the area. So you can find a lot of stuff. You can find a slow cooker in a thrift store for like five bucks. A dehydrator oh, totally. you can find too. Goodwill, Salvation Army. Salvation Army has Instapots, you know. Um, but you know, warning, when you get into all this, you know, making all this plant-based cooking, you could be like Kathy and I, where you just get addicted to all the cool new cooking gadgets, right? <laughs> because I probably have like one of everything. <laughs> well, I'm impressed that you only have one of everything. <laughs> well, I'm not being complete lionist. I might have two of a few things, but yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you definitely beat me with that. You've got a lot of milk makers. <laughs> well, and see, it's, it comes from when I'm doing books. So my first book was The Vegan Slow Cooker. Right. And at the, I had 20 some slow cookers to try the different 20? ones and stuff. Uh -huh. Wow. I think I'm down Did to like. Did you get any of them comped? Because you're like kind of a walking advertisement for them. It. <laughs> Every once in a while, someone will. Nutramilk is actually sending me one of their machines, which I'm super excited about because it is hard to go, oh, I'll just spend $500 on this appliance and not, not sure if I'm going to keep it or not. Absolutely. Yeah. But a lot of my readers and watchers and students are have it and they love it. They use it as a food processor as well. So I'm always Ooh. learning and it's kind of fun. But even going back to you and college eating and what can you make without heat? Um, mm -hmm. Because like I can see having some bread because it's easy to find sliced vegan bread, a can of chickpeas. If you have access even just to a cooler, you can have some relish, some mm -hmm. tofu mayo. I mean, obviously most of us are whole food plant-based. So you would make a no oil tofu mayonnaise at home your 19 year old may not do that, <laughs> right? right? Right, So just get the veganese, right? You're right. 19. You, you there, <laughs> there's no shame. Everybody's on this like um, arc from vegan to plant-based yeah. too. Absolutely. But I was thinking about that because you can make chickpea sal salad sandwiches, tofu salad sandwiches, and then making these overnight oats requires- it's so good nothing it's right so easy. it's so easy i mean i, I have you know I, I collect jars i don't know if you do that <laughs> i collect like if i if i buy like pickles or something i'll you know soak it and take the label off and i keep the jars and so i have a quite a big jar collection do you You're, like, you can relate <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i want to go thrifting <laughs> with you and hang out with you we so uh, have to do that <laughs> for sure so um but so like my oats are always in these, like, I don't know, this might've been like a 
pot, like a small pasta sauce jar. Yeah, that looks like pasta blue. sauce. I love yeah, it's that. Yeah, classic out. <laughs> so, and then with the Buy Nothing group, like someone was giving away a bunch of jars and I'm like, oh, I'll take them. And last night, you know, you were talking about milk machines and I'm so sad I gave mine away because last night I'm like, we didn't go to the market today. We are completely out of every single milk <laughs> and I'm making overnight oats in the morning. So I got some almonds and I put them in um, my Nutribullet, which I love. It was some water and a little bit of vanilla and um, I don't even think I put sweetener in it. And I, I blended it till it was smooth. And I just, you know, and I, I, you don't even have to do this because it'll settle to the bottom, but I put it through a strainer and now I have almond milk that costs pennies. <laughs> Right, there you go. So, I love I mean, fine you... mesh strainers more than nut milk bags. Yeah. Though I do, um, there is one nut milk bag I recommend, which is Rossum Creations, but they creep mm -hmm. me out because... <laughs> the bag they, does? Yeah, I don't, there's always little it's pieces. It's just too much work. It's just not, I don't know, for things like this, I just don't think it's necessary. Do you have one? Great, because yeah, you can really squeeze it out, but um, you don't really need it. Well, and another thing, uh, and also Brenda and Gina are like all excited that they, they collect jars too. So, which is kind of oh, awesome. Yay. They're like, woo! We have um, to start a Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> vegans who collect jars. Yeah, exactly. So like oat milk, I make a lot. Cause I always say like, especially with some people being snowed in or just the fact that there's a couple places you could have walked out your house and gotten mm -hmm. frostbite. It's crazy to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. All of us usually have rolled oats in the pantry, and mm -hmm. you can take like a cup, anywhere from a half a cup to a cup of rolled oats, three to four cups of water, depending on how thick you want. I always think of it like, do you want skim milk or whole milk or in between? All right. I really want to know how you do it without it becoming like gooey, because I tried make if I, without, when I got rid of my milk machine, I tried doing it in my Nutribullet, and um, it just was... You know how oats get like they, they, make, they make great cheese. <laughs> right. And there there is there are some things. So the first thing is if you're using a high speed blender, you want to take breaks. You don't want to heat it up. So Joanne mm. Lakes, who um, follows us a lot, loves to put in. So it's like let's say we we're doing four cups of water. And also, mm. if you put a little bit of cashews, a couple of tablespoons. Well, oh, that's what I did. That's so funny because I make my own cashew creamer for coffee and stuff. And I was, for a while, that's how I discovered that the oats get gooey because I was trying to cut the cashews with oats, but I, it didn't, I never really succeeded. Well, okay, so, so what continue. she does is she blends the cashews with the water first mm -hmm. and blends it as much as she wants till they're all done, then adds a cup of ice and the oats. So if the oats get heated, oh. but if I'm using a small milk maker, and I'm making a latte, I can heat up the oats, but that's not sure. quite the same sort of thing. So there, that's one thing is to use cold water to not over blend. So you may be tempted to blend it, the rolled oats until you can't see them at all. Well, that's, it's a fine line though, isn't it? Cause you don't want a chalky sort of, you know what I mean? Uh, if the oats, if you don't blend them enough, then you sort of have texture, right? So Well, that's you're going to strain it, and you're going to strain it through a fine mesh strainer. If you squeeze ah, out course. all the stuff, you're squeezing out all the slime. So even in, Got it. in a strainer, <laughs> okay. let me slime. see. So, you know, you're kind of, what is it, yeah. folding almost. Yes. But if you press, yes. then you can press slime out too. So these are all little <laughs> things you can do to be slimeless. But I also, sunflower lecithin is supposed to help, some cashews in there. They also make it more of a mouthfeel of oatly. Usually you put in like mm -hmm. a tablespoon of sweetener or a date or two because mm -hmm. the way oatly uses amylase, which is an enzyme, mm -hmm. it actually creates sure. some sugars. And mm. another thing, if you're not whole food, plant-based, no oil, you can use one teaspoon of coconut oil to all that. But sure. all that sure. kind of helps. So the cashews and the fat in the cashews or the fat in the coconut oil also helps kind of with the slimy. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to try making it today after we get off. <laughs> That'll be awesome. So You'll tell me. I can't, I can't wait. And you know, it's funny because... Um, 
I just created a new cheese sauce. The other night I was making tostadas. And again, I had to look to see what I had. I'm like, I really want like a queso. So I'm like, oh, I have cashews. I have oats. I have all the seasonings. I have plant milk. I have nutritional yeast, right? Mm -hmm. So I actually made a cheesy sauce with oats and cashews, more oats than cashews. But the great thing about oats is when you do over blend them and they get hot, it's like a gooey cheese. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And it's low fat, right? Um, I love the cashew cheeses, but I was thinking, you know, I'm eating an awful lot of like cashew creams and things. I'm going to try kind of cutting the fat a little bit with some oats. And it was fantastic. Same with potatoes. Like if you put, I have a cheese sauce recipe that I demonstrated at a couple of food conferences that's made with potatoes and sweet potato and all those same things. And potatoes get really gooey in the um, high speed blender too. They make a fabulous cheese sauce. Oh, that, that's all great. And I like have like 10 queso recipes. I'm addicted. <laughs> I make one that's with oats in the blender, no cashews. And I use like, I think it's like a half teaspoon of organic cornstarch with it. Yes, cornstarch. Yeah, you gotta, you have to have something like that or tapioca starch for sure. Yeah. And it, as, and it heats up in the Vitamix. It's, oats are just like phenomenal. They're cheap. You can make milk, cheese, breakfast, I have um, an so good for you. I, I love it because even steel cut oats are reasonable and oat groats are mm -hmm. something a lot of people eat in the whole foods community too. So like mm -hmm. an oat groat just has like the outer shell or mm -hmm. it's not a shell. What would you call it? Why can I call it? It's hull. hull. Thank hull. you. Yeah. Ten dollars on in the Lisa. <laughs> I feel like it should be a game show. <laughs> Jeopardy. Right. Vegan Jeopardy. <laughs> what is the thing around an oat groat? Um, right. <laughs> and then steel cut oats are literally cut with this steel thing into two to three pieces. Rolled oats are oat groats that are steamed and rolled, just for those of you who don't know. And Lisa, I'm going to let you make your oats and talk all about them. So I'm going to give you a full screen. Okay. Okay, so I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I'm gonna just, that's my disclaimer. Um, I'm sure many of you know how to make overnight oats and oatmeal and all those things, but I just, um, for me, it's all about the toppings. It's about the flavor. Oh, hello, who's that? <laughs> that's my kitty. So let's see if I, here, I'll come back here a second. Let's see, if, come up. Oh, you can see the back of his head. He's like, don't touch me. Aww. <laughs> and I'll um, go back to I'll fool me. you. Aww. He wants to be a star. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, I know. I miss my kitties in Austin right now. Ringo. Oh, he's your kitchen helper, huh? He, he is. And... I don't have a jar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay, what are you doing in San Francisco, too? Or is it about the um, we? My, my, no, my husband and I had to come out here for a few months last year, and we fell in love with it. And we'd been thinking about um, getting out of Austin at least for a year. We, so when we were here, we're like, let's, we both work from home. So we're like, let's just stay here if we can. And the apart, there was an apartment available at a really great rate, believe it or not. And um, so we rented it and decided to rent out our house in Austin and for a year to see what it's like. But we're sort of, we haven't quite rented it out our house yet because we have a teenage son who's still there. So we're trying to, fig we're kind of trying to figure it all out, but we love San Francisco. So here we are. And, um, but I, you know, the thing I miss, it's really funny. I'm like, of course I have to move out after I redo my kitchen. That's beautiful <gasps> now with my Talavera tile and my beautiful colors. I'm like, now I'm in this apartment in San Francisco. I'm like, oh, well, at least it's functional, right? Oh, First wow. world problems. That would be <laughs> hard. That would be so hard. Yeah, yeah. But I think, you know, I'm doing great. And like I said, the Buy Nothing group has been fantastic. I have a food processor. I have a Nutribullet. I have, I mean, it's unbelievable the things that I've been gifted. It's incredible. And I've met incredible people. It's such a great community. So if you're not on your local Buy Nothing group, I encourage you to join it because it's just so, makes you feel so good about humanity. Like people are so generous and, and I don't know, it's a great place to, to meet people. I'm going to grab, I don't know why I don't have a jar here. Let me grab a jar real quick. But see, I love how, like, my kitchen is kind of weirdly large, like, not necessarily large, like, oh, look how large it is. It's just, like, not necessarily functionally large, and yours is functionally small because you just leaned over and got what you needed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And, and you can't see it, but the surface I'm using, I got from the Buy Nothing group, it's a restaurant-grade butcher block <gasps> on wheels. And someone was giving it away, and I'm like, I'll take it. 
and because the kitchen's small, so it creates all this surface space. Um, it's fantastic. Okay, so um, like I said, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. Um, where are my little measuring cups? Thing. But um, it's all about the topping. So just quickly, I will um, make the the oats, and you probably, like I said, you probably all know how to do this. <laughs> and I and know Trader Joe's some... rolled oats. I see. Yes. You know, I do love to buy in bulk because it's inexpensive and I like to not, you know, buy a lot of plastic. But, you know, with inflation, everything's getting so expensive, not the bulk items, but um, but, you know, I don't want to have to go to three or four different stores. Um, so I'm doing most of my shopping. At uh Oh, <laughs> I think we lost her. She will come back in. You can see Fergus now. Do you guys see Fergus? Now he wants to go away. No, come here. <laughs> he only wants to be here when he can annoy me. So um, Lisa will be coming back in in a second. And Liz Lena is saying good morning from West Virginia. Happy to be here. And we are happier here. And she's loving the lives and loving the bundle. So I'll kind of briefly mention the bundle while we're waiting for um, our special guest to come back in is it's $49 just so you know off the bat it's for thousands of dollars worth of products that you can only get through next Sunday and I have actually four classes in there I thought I had three but we also have um, an instant pot 101 like start cooking in your instant pot I have a dehydrator class where we make all these cool powders. So we make fruit powders, we make vegetable powders, all the different powders. Um, I have another class where we do instant pot and slow cooker instructions for all the recipes and an air fryer class. And one of the cool things in the air fryer class, you can you can get a sneak peek by going to healthyslowcooking.com and look for air fryer French toast. I have that recipe up there and it's so cool. It uses nuts and oats to coat it, but if you don't eat oat, um, if you eat oats, if you don't eat nuts, you could just use oats and leave the nuts out completely. Um, oh, Marilyn says, hi, Fergus. I know, isn't it? And Fergus scratched me. Can you see the blood? I'm being, actually, you can see lots of scratches. I haven't had a young cat in so long. Um, and Tracy Reese says he's so cute. I think he's cute too. Um, and Marilyn said she bought the bundle through my link, and I appreciate it. Um, when you buy through someone's link, you're, we, we are affiliates for the bundle as well as contributors. So it does... Um, give us money to make more recipes for you guys. So that's an awesome thing too. And I'm hoping that she did not lose her internet completely. She should be calling back in any moment. But if not, do you guys have any questions about oats or oatmeal? I know she was getting ready to show us some overnight oats. One of the super cool things that she was suggesting is let's make overnight oats and then in the winter heat them up before we serve them, which seems so practical and it makes so much sense. But I usually just do it in, um, oh, and Brenda, Brenda, wherever you are, if you look down or to the side, I think you're on, um, I think, well, actually, I think everyone has to be on YouTube now. So if you look down below and you click the See More, the link for the bundle, um, all of um, all the information for Lisa is in there as well. So you can get and see more of her stuff. And actually, let me just do this really quick and I might be able to grab the bundle link and put it in here too in the comments I need my computer keyboard for that so that's that's my link to the bundle so it's in the comments you guys can see that now it says Lisa's back in the waiting room 
Okay, it never rang for me. So I don't see her, Flow Studios. Um, I'll turn interview off and then turn it back on. And if you guys want to come out, there we go. Hey, you're here. Okay, let me, let me get you over here. Okay, I've got you full screen. Hi. And I can hear you. I can hear you, yay. <laughs> right when I'm about to do the thing that we're supposed to do, make breakfast, right? <laughs> do you know what? Our peop my people are here for us just to hang out and chat and they're enjoying Sunday morning with us. So I love it. I talked a little bit about here, the bundle and some stuff like that and put, so please continue with your Odie goodness. <laughs> I do want to say though, I am blown, this is my first time doing the bundle and I am blown away by it. Like Dr. Furman and Dr. McDougal and Victoria Moran and Lauren Burnick. I mean, it, and you, it's an incredible, incredible value. It's, I, I can't wait to see, look at everything. Um, it's it, it is amazing. So like even just my classes, four classes is $140 if you bought them separately. And you only need to find a couple of things that you like. But I'm going to let you finish cooking and then we can talk about okay. bundle after. Okay. So I put about a half a cup of oats in here. I usually do about three quarters of a cup because I like to eat a lot. <laughs> but um, <laughs> this is also a small jar. So I'm not going to, I don't want to overfill it. And then of course you've got to have your chia seeds, right? So I'm going to put about a tablespoon of chia in here. And then because they're so good for you, where are my flax seeds? Um, I can't find my flax seeds. Oh, here they are. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put some ground. So I ground these flax seeds in the Nutribullet. So I'm going to put, I don't know, about a teaspoon in my jar. So far familiar, right? <laughs> It looks right? delicious. I'm just sad okay. I don't have any waiting for me after you make yours. Oh, I wish I could feed you. Um, okay, so I'm going to put some cinnamon in. I don't know. Put as much as you want. I, I like a lot. And then I, my favorite spice is cardamom. <gasps> I knew you were going to say, oh, my God, it's my favorite spice. We're sisters. I know. <laughs> I'm so, I love it because it's so, like, floral and beautiful. Yes. Mm, it's so good. And when you have it in a sweet dish, it just transforms it. It is like having um, dessert for breakfast. So I'm gonna put some of that in. Um, I like a lot. <laughs> I like a lot and, of flavors with things like that. And I think it also makes then this inexpensive ingredient super yes. palatable to like your family who might be like, I don't want oatmeal. That's a great, that's a great point. You know, because people often do things, yeah, like, oh, you know, it's so bland, the food that you eat. Well, no, it's not. It's, we have tons of flavor, right? Um, I'm going to put some raisins in. You can put, I love chopped apricots. I, you know, you could use cherries, cranberries. Um, I'm going to put some raisins in. And, you know, here's the thing. I don't want my um, chia seeds to clump up, so I try to get it nice and mixed first. You know, right? That's smart. And then I'm just going to take my homemade <laughs> almond milk that I made last night because I was out. So easy. Like it was, I think I put a handful, I didn't even measure it, of almonds in there and just filled it with water. Okay. And so I'm going to put a, about a cup. You know, I made my oats too thick, my overnight oats too thick last night. Um, so uh, you want to have enough water so it can absorb and not turn into like a paste. So I've got about a cup in there. I'll probably put a little bit more. You know, and after a while, you don't even measure, right? I'm just measuring for everyone else so you can see. But it's about, you know, if you have a half a cup or three quarters of a cup of your oats and chia and everything, it's about a cup and a half, I guess, of liquid, don't you think? Yeah, and and the thing is too is like Lisa, you might like yours thinner than I like mine, and so oh, that's I, a good point. It's kind of a journey. Like, mm -hmm. I kind of feel like we're on t the same spice level, so I'd be really happy with that. But like, sometimes I'll add a little bit of vegan homemade vegan yogurt, 
Mm, I've done and, that too. It's so good. Oh, and then oh, like yeah, in yeah. the summer, it really does feel like you're eating pudding from the chia seeds and the yogurt and all of that. Oh yeah. Well, and the thing is, um, that's the thing about it. It's like, you can make it so many different ways. And so I'm just, this is like the, a base recipe. Hang on. I'm going to grab something. This is a base recipe. Um, this is just like your basic and then add to it, whatever you want. And uh, lately I've been getting into monk fruit. I usually use dates for my sweetener because they're a whole food and they're so good for you. Um, but with the chia, I mean, the um, overnight oats, I like a little liquid sweetener. You could use maple syrup, but I, I just put a couple of drops of monk fruit in and it's delicious. And then I'm just gonna let that sit overnight. And then the next morning, I'm either gonna put some berries in there and eat it out of the jar, or because like we discussed, when it's cold, I'm gonna dump it in a bowl, which I'm gonna do right now with the one I made last night and I'm gonna stick it in the microwave and heat it up because I don't want cold food this morning, I want hot food. So if you have several jars of overnight oats in your fridge, you have breakfast or a snack for you know however many jars you make. I love it. So, now, Liz Lena is asking two different things. Can you batch them, batch fix them, and how long can you keep them in the fridge? I do batch them. I batch them in jars and you don't have to, you could do them in a container. Um, but I like to have the, the serving, the jars because it's fun and I have so many jars, I got to use them. Right. Um, but I think, I don't know. What do you think? Like a week? Probably yeah, about a week. I think you can make Maybe about little... seven days in advance here. I'm going to change where we're side by side again. Yeah. Yeah. And what I like to do, instead of doing a big one, I like to do it in jars like you do, and then I can make different flavors. So like what I yeah. would do is do, I would do what Lisa did, but not put the spices in, and then maybe I'd have some chai. And maybe, um, and mm. so like if I do a chai or an Earl Grey, I will use that Ooh. as part of the liquid. You can make mocha So you use like Earl Grey tea in it? Mm -hmm. What a great idea. Yeah, I, well, I, I did an oat book, so I have like I actually have okay, um, yeah. <laughs> blackberry mojito overnight oats that are thinner because wow. they don't have yogurt. Um, oh. And but like, if you use vanilla extract, and you're oh, not yeah. getting non-alcoholic extract, that's, there is I only use that's the only one I use non-alcohol okay. alcohol-free vanilla. Because if you're okay with using a, a a little bit of vanilla regularly in there that has some alcohol, you can put the same amount of rum in there, which is just like, like we're not talking about a shot of rum, right? We're talking about like, this would be the most. Maybe you would put a quarter teaspoon. And so it, wow, so it really tastes like a mojito. It really tastes like a mojito, or you can get rum flavoring too. Wow, um, that's wild. Well, you know, Trader Joe's has that bourbon flavored vanilla, alcohol free vanilla. That's really good. Oh, I haven't tried that because usually I think bourbon vanilla, the term comes from using bourbon to, to make the extract. Because you can make your own vanilla oh. extract at home using alcohol. You just buy vanilla beans and cut them up. Lisa, I know you know, know this already. <laughs> I'm telling <laughs> no, anybody how I, to. You know, I don't, that's like. There, I sort of pick the things I want to make from scratch, and vanilla is not one of them. So I don't know that. So I'm learning so much from you today. Oh, uh, well, and I just, again, I have some waiting. It takes a few months. So like at Costco, I got this big thing of vanilla because I was doing a lot of Ninja Creamy ice cream recipes. And mm. I was like, vanilla is super expensive these days, too. It is. It so is. if you can get a vanilla bean and just kind of cut it in half, and depending on how big your jar is, you can leave it that mm -hmm. way, or you can cut it in quarters, and just put it in a dark um, corner, cover it up with, you can use vodka, you can use rum, you can use bourbon, and then it soaks in after a few months, and that's how it's made. Well, you know, and every once in a while, Costco has like um, a really good deal on vanilla beans, and like, it's like a pack of them because they can be a really expensive. You can get them in bulk too. You could like buy one vanilla bean at, at a place, like at a co-op or something. But, um, but I'm going to try that. It, it's super fun. Now, I don't know exactly what you need to do to make it non-alcoholic where it keeps. So that I would have to research because it's actually the alcohol that mm -hmm. preserves it. 
preserves it right. Yeah, and I'm sure, I think they use glycerin, but I don't know what mm. the food safety rules are of that. Marilyn, if you're on here, Marilyn is our preserving and dehydrating queen that I always, you know, she's, oh. she's like, oh, I dehydrated my pumpkins and grind it into a flour. And then when I need oh, a man. can of pumpkin, I just I mix it with some water. <laughs> You'll find one on the Buy Nothing site for sure. Oh, oh no, I have, well, yeah, I have one in Austin, but I use, I love it. And I don't have one here, so I'm going to have to find one here. Well, and another thing um, is I have like the little Ninja air fryer toaster oven that goes up and down. It's smaller and that might work in your smaller kitchen. You can dehydrate in it and do other things. And Marilyn, I don't, I think this went up. You can reuse the vanilla beans many times to make extract. So after you finish it, you can finish, fill it back up again. Um, and Robin was saying, and she feels like monk fruit is not good for the digestive system and maple syrup and date paste is better. And what I say to that, and Lisa, you may have something else, is that it, we're on a wide range of things. And if something doesn't fit with your dietary needs, absolutely switch it out for something that works for you. Sometimes mm. I even use agave nectar in a pinch. So and yeah, I know I have them all. <laughs> people think it's the devil, right? I know. I don't. I use agave too. I mean, my main sweetener is definitely whole dates and I use maple syrup. I sometimes use brown rice syrup, which is also can be controversial, like when I make my um, my granola. But okay, so monk fruit I, you know, I look to Dr. Greger, nutritionfacts.org for any information because I had heard that stevia actually is not good for the gut flora. So, um, and Dr. Shurzai, you know, the brain docs, the Shurzais, I love them. Um, she cooks, she uses a lot of monk fruit and I'm like, well, wow, she's using it. I'm going to, I want to look into it because they, you know, they're very knowledgeable. And so Dr. Greger was okay with it and um, I trust him. So that's sort of my source. Uh, if he, if there's something that he like, he doesn't like agave though. Like he's not an agave fan. He did a whole thing on different sugars. If you have a chance, go look at it. Um, and he kind of breaks down the best ones and how some are just like you may as well just use refined sugar. So, um, but he he gave the okay on monk fruit, and because most of the monk fruit is made with erythritol, which sounded scarier to me, you know, erythritol. Um, but it's actually not bad. So according to Dr. Greger, so I'm I'm. Until I hear further from him, I'm okay with it. But yeah, I mean, you know, of course, mm -hmm. if you're a whole food plant based, you want to stick with things like dates and, you know, apricots, you can make apricot paste, mango paste. I mean, you know, you can use all kinds of fruit. I never thought about making apricot paste. And I'm like, oh, you just like brighten it's it. A, it's the same way you make date paste. So yeah, of I mean, course. if you are whole food plant based and you don't want to mess with those uh, zero sweeteners or whatever, um, yeah, yeah, definitely go with the fruits. Yeah, and just um, remember, so anyway. you always have a choice, right? So you guys have a choice. Yes. You know, if you were allergic to oats, of course, we wouldn't want you to use oats either. So <laughs> be mindful of your own diet. And that yeah. I've gotten to with my books, like the last several books for desserts, I'm like, sweetener of choice to taste. I used blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Because like people get really... It, you know, and, and research is constantly evolving, and it, it just depends. It depends on you, yeah. but you guys should do you, and we both support you in that. Absolutely. And, you know, and the recipes I have, I'm just, just starting to build the recipes on the WeHeal website, but um, I have a few dessert recipes, and I'm pretty sure they're all just dates. I may have maple syrup in there, too. But um, anyway, so this today is, other than the monk fruit in my overnight oats, everything is fruit. And um, one of the things, I, so first of all, I love, I never used to, I used to be a snob about my berries. They had to be fresh. But now I'm all about the frozen berries, especially if you shop at Costco, because you can get the giant thing of cherries and the giant thing of blueberries. And so I put them in dishes and let them defrost in my fridge and um, I use those on my oatmeal and they're wonderful. And if they're not sweet enough, they're sa a little sour. You can put some date syrup in there. <clears throat> and then um, with the strawberries, what I've been making for my overnight oats is this strawberry compote, which is super simple. I take the, you want me to show you how to do it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you um, want, so if you my, don't um, mind. Yeah, yeah, no, that's why I'm here. 
So I have my dates, which, oh my gosh, in the mission here in San Francisco, I got this giant box of dates for $20. And <gasps> it was like such a great deal. So I got to go back to the mission because um, this is all I have left. <laughs> so um, I'm going to put, I don't know, four, maybe five dates in here. And so that's going to be, and I like, uh, you know, you can blend this up so that you don't have any date, but I actually like when there's little tiny pieces and you get like a little chewiness in there. It's like so good, right? Oh, I love that dates are like They're like nature's miracle, right? So I've got about five dates in there. And then I'm going to take my frozen strawberries and I'm going to put them in there. The only thing about doing this um, is that, you know, it's always noisy when you have to blend things up, right? <laughs> they're used to it and this... trust me <laughs> <laughs> okay so and i put the juice in there so i got my my frozen strawberries that i defrosted and my dates and i'm going to just whip those up in the nutribullet and then i'm going to add the chia seeds and then they'll sit in the fridge and they'll become nice and like compote like and it's so good on the uh, overnight oats or oatmeal do you use whole chia seeds or do you grind your chia seeds and you know, sometimes I grind them. Um, I did, you know, you could put the chia seeds in here and grind it all together. That would be perfectly fine. But I like a little texture, so I put them in after. Okay, I'm going to, I'll mute you. I'm muting you while you're blending. And so when you take, oh, that was it? <laughs> that was it. Because wow. I like, you know. You're so leaving you them kind of chunky a little bit, right? Yes, I like so, a little. Okay. Yeah, and there, there isn't even that much, to be honest. I mean, I love my Nutribullet. I think that's, it's now, I, it used to be my Vitamix that I used all the time, but now I use my Nutribullet all the time. And see, I have so, a Ninja smoothie blender that's kind of the same. And I also have here, I'll, sh um, I love it because it has out. a spice grinder attachment so that I can like, Ooh. Mm. And you so, out gadgeted me. <laughs> you have so out gadgeted me. You know, somebody on the buy nothing group the other day had a ninja and I was like, I want it, I need it. And, but someone else got it. Um, okay, so here's, uh, and then I'm just gonna put a couple of spoonfuls and then I'm gonna just put that in a container with a lid and let it sit in the fridge and it'll get nice and thick. And that will be one of my yummy, yummy toppings. So, and you know, it's so good. Berries are so good for you. I'm a health coach. So of course I'm going to encourage people to eat berries because they're just one of the kind of superfoods, blueberries and stuff. <clears throat> so here's my compote that I made and here's my overnight oats that let's pretend I already heated them up in the microwave because I want them hot today. Or, you know, if the sun comes out, I might want them cold. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to put my defrosted frozen cherries. I love frozen cherries. I could just eat those frozen like a snack. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put my blueberries and then I wanted to show you. So I'm going to make a date caramel <clears throat> and I'm sure you do this too, right? I do. And actually either later today or tomorrow, I'm going to make like a date caramel mocha in my little milk Ooh. maker that we were talking about. I can't wait to see that. I'm so, I can't wait for your, your episode. Um, okay, so I'm just going to make a small amount of date paste here. Um, I mean, date, uh, date caramel. I really love it with a little peanut butter in it. But we are, that was another thing. I looked in the peanut butter container last night. And I was like, wah, wah, no peanut butter. Um, so I could, <laughs> I have almond butter. And then I also have tahini. I'm like, I could make it like a halva flavor. So what do you Ooh. think? Which one should I go with? Should I try the tahini? Yeah, I think that sounds Let's really interesting. Because that sounds like very like... San Francisco multiple star <laughs> restaurant tahini caramel, doesn't it? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's like and there's a there's a shop right right around the corner from me that sells all these wonderful um, Mediterranean and Middle Eastern things. Like they have, you know, just the grape leaves you can wrap grape leaves in, they have dates, they have lots of different kinds of tahini. <clears throat> is is um, that where you got the fig uh, the the not figs dates because um fran is saying where in the mission did you find the great deal on dates so she must oh, be goodness. near you yes so there if you uh, the corner of like 16th and oh gosh i guess it's, i take the bus and sometimes i don't pay attention to what the streets are when i'm down there but it's around 16th and i think mission and um there's all of those little sort of um 
Spanish uh, shops um, that sell, you know, they sell, I bought a mole there and I bought mm -hmm. chili, dried chilies there. Um, and they, a lot of, several of them actually have the giant boxes of dates. So if you, I'd say if you're on 16th, somewhere on mission right around there, just go into some of the little, like, they're not really bodegas. They have like fresh produce and stuff. Um, if you go inside, you'll find it. And um, like I said, giant boxes. And I, it's funny because I was watching, um, I follow Rip Esselstyn and he, he, he was uh, talking about dates and he lifted up his box and it was exactly the same box I got in the mission. So now I want to know where in Austin he got it. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. So yeah, mission. Um, and okay, don't forget so to tell I'm people going... about that. That's the big, that? you're getting ready to put the big ingredient that turns it from date paste to, to caramel. Uh, a little bit of vanilla. You could put more than that. And you know, vanilla powder. I have some really good vanilla powder back in Austin. You could use date paste, um, but you know, the dates really are what gives it the, the caramel uh, texture. <clears throat> and then you put some milk in there. My homemade almond milk's going far this morning. <laughs> <laughs> And it costs so, a lot less than if you bought a carton somewhere and you didn't have any Absolutely. Waste. And I didn't have, even though I really want one now because of you, I did, you don't have to have a fancy milk maker. You yeah. just have to have something to blend them in, right? Okay, I'm going to blend this up. You want to mute me? Sure. I can, I'll mute you this time. And I'll put this in between the game. Oh, I didn't mute you. Now you're muted. I don't know what I clicked, y'all. So some of the questions and things that are going on is someone was like, ooh, mango paste. And someone else said apricot paste is delicious. I'm unmuting you now. Um, and it's just kind of amazing. Like, I think sometimes no matter what you do, even if you're experimenting a lot, like Lisa and I, I think it is super awesome that you learn something new and you think of something in a different perspective. I yes. want to see your yummy caramel now. Well, it's not quite there yet. In there, so I stopped it to put the cardamom in. Ah! <laughs> uh, oh, you're putting cardamom in. Oh, that's going to be beautiful. I love that. Yes. Well, because if you think about like those flavors, those like Indian and Middle Eastern flavors with the tahini. Mm. Uh, tahini and cardamom go really well together, right? That's like a halva-y flavor. A okay, little so bit blend, of orange flower water would be oh, awesome. Or rose water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, we are, we are new best friends. We are. I can't wait to hang out with you and, and, eat, and dine with you. I know. Not many people love the floral flavors. So I'm always looking for people to do that. And Liz says, that's what I'm loving about these lives. I'm learning so much from so many, which is awesome. And, um, okay. Yeah, so I, my, I made it, I made this a little too thin uh, because we're on live TV. Of course I made it a little thinner than I would. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put that, I'm just going to drizzle it onto my overnight oats. And then um, I like to have a little crunch. Oh, you know what I put here too, is I chopped up some apples. And sometimes I'll just, when I'm having a sweet tooth craving, you know, it's super easy to make like a apple, you know, crumble in the oven, but you can make it raw too. You know, I put, just put a little cinnamon, a little maple syrup, and um, it's delicious. A little, maybe some chopped pecans, some chopped dates or raisins. And so that makes a great oatmeal topping too. So I'm, I have some date paste here and I like banana on my, my overnight oats or my oats. So I'm going to whip up this little super simple, like apple pie flavored apple to put on my overnight oats. I'm going to put that in there. Lots of fruit. <laughs> and see if and you're then... having a gathering, I just see all the different ingredients you just made and toppings, like a topping bar with oatmeal. I've done this before with like slow cooker instant pot oats, but it would work with overnight oats too. Oh, completely. Yeah, I do it. I do it a lot with like um, tacos. I'll do like a taco bar for my friends. Super fun. Um, or like a pizza bar, right? Okay, so I've got some, I want a little crunch on there now. Look at all those colors. Look at all that beautiful fruit. Um, then now I'm going to put some toasted slivered almonds. You could put, you know, whatever you 
like best that could have be pistachios or pecans. And then I have, um, because they're so good for you, I like to have a little bit of walnut. They're good for your brain, all those healthy fats. And, oh, and you know what that I've been doing recently? I have to share this with you because it's a really um, super fun topping. I was at Trader Joe's and I got dehydrated strawberries. So I've been putting like a few of those on top of my, my oatmeal just for a little like tart crunch. Mm -hmm. And so now I've got my, my, my date caramel. I've got my chia jam. I've got my apple pie. I've got blueberries, cherries. I mean, it's like dessert for breakfast. Which is, I'm all about that. I'm coming over here to, because like one of my contributions to the bundle is, here, let me go back to where we're both here, is a dehydrator class. So these are a bunch of dehydrated blueberries that Ooh. I made. I went to Sprouts and they had like flats for like $10. Mm. So I got two oh, man. and I dehydrated one. But in the class, I dehydrate strawberries, which you slice them and put them in the dehydrator. Don't have a dehydrator, go to the thrift store or use your oven. Right. I was going to say end. low heat in the oven. But wait, I have a question for you, because when I make dehydrated fruit, it's usually chewy. How do you get the, that sort of freeze dried crunchiness? How do you get them crunchy? I just keep going. So I, I like do it for like a day or two. And then I go ahead. Now the powders, because then I'll grind it up in my Ninja spice grinder. Because then you can make strawberry milk, like strawberry quick, like oh, when you were a yeah. kid, only you don't have to feel bad about it because it's strawberries. Yeah. And then like if you're going to like a you pick strawberry place or like, for instance, these were in season when I bought them. They're very cheap. And a lot of times when you get dried fruit, it can be quite expensive. So just as mm -hmm. it may not, it's I don't know that I would put just sliced berries on top. I think I would probably sprinkle powder, but you can get them crisp because you can't burn something in the dehydrator. So like, <laughs> that's a good point. You can keep going, but it's not exactly the same as freeze dried. Okay. But they sound nice and crunchy though. So that I would love that. I usually just when I get bulk berries. I just put them in the freezer until I figure out how I want to use them. Um, but you know what? You made me think of something. So with the straw, have you made meringue with your fruit powders? With I aquafaba? have not. Oh my gosh. So if you use your aquafaba and a little uh, cream of tartar um, and you whip it in your, your mixer, you can hand mix it too. But if you have a stand mixer, it's, it's a little less um, straining. <laughs> um, you can whip up the aquafaba and if you put in some strawberry um, powder or your blueberry powder or any fruit powder, you can put that in and it makes a flavor, fruit flavored meringue. <gasps> Now, do you, what it. do you sweeten your meringues with? Because I've seen them made with, well, you have to use sugar, right, to do it? Well, or? I haven't, you know, my son is the baker in the family, so I usually have him make it. <laughs> um, and he uses a lot of, you know, like powdered sugar and stuff. Okay. So I would probably use, I have like, I haven't tried it yet, but I would use like probably powdered monk fruit. Or mm -hmm. you could take, I mean, if you could try, I don't know how it would work out, but you could probably take date sugar or if you use coconut sugar and put it in your blender till it's powder and you could try that. I mean, if you can do it with the strawberry um, powder, then you could probably do it pretty much with any powdered sweetener um, That's that, that you use. And Just I wasn't trying really, to call really you fine. out on that at all. Cause sometimes oh, I'll, no, make, no. I'll make special things and I will use a vegan sugar for it sometimes. Like one of the reasons I haven't done it yet is I just wasn't sure if ever like the, I just haven't done it yet, and I just should, sugar or not, and I love the idea of putting the powders in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've powdered other sugars before that are a little bit healthier, so, um, and again, it's not about perfection, right? It's, uh, you know, I still, I, I eat whole food plant-based at home, but like when my son makes something with sugar, I treat myself, or if I'm out, like yesterday, I met the San Francisco Veg Society in Chinatown at this uh, vegetarian Chinese plate, place and it was so good and I ate some mock meat, you know, so I'm not like 100%, I'm, you know, probably 90% uh, whole food plant based. Um, so, but it's really up to you, like you said, whatever you like to use, then experiment with the ingredients that you have and that you feel good about. I love that and I think the thing is too, with this being so close to the new year and maybe some people are kind of using the bundle as like a new start too, mm -hmm. is just, 
be kind to yourself because it's if you have a bite of sugar and your doctor has <laughs> not forbid you to because that's that's the exception if you know that you have some serious heart disease and you have to be 100%. That's a little different than mm -hmm, I want to have more energy and I just yes. had a bite of vegan chocolate, right? Right. So, That's a very good point. Yes, yes. And, and because, it is true. Self-empathy is huge. Like you have to be kind to yourself. And my advice is just eat as many fruits and vegetables as you can. Put as many, especially green leafies and vegetables on your plate. And then, you know, you're sort of crowding out the other stuff, right? Like for people who are starting out and aren't plant-based, that's what I say. Just start to add them, add things before. And so you're not thinking about what I have to take away or give up, you know, start adding the good stuff. Well, and we haven't talked about this before, but I have kind of a, a certain way of looking at things like, cause if you're going from being maybe junk food vegan to more plant-based whole food, you're gonna look at it one way, but if you're like standard American diet, just trying to start to be vegan, then you're looking at a whole other way because like- um, Absolutely. My, my wife, Cheryl, um, did become um, plant-based, but she started off, she was meat eater for most of the time that we were together. I think it's been about four or five years now that she's been eating um, plant-based, but she, Beyond Burgers, that's what tipped her over and now my husband the, same. Okay, okay cool it's yeah. like some people get very angry and they're like no it's horrible is it full of oil yes no one's trying to tell tell you that it's not and if you're whole food plant-based it's not for you and maybe that's your 10 percent. Right. maybe once every few months well, you have a beyond yeah. burger it's a you're... transitional food for sure like my husband it really did help him transition away from beef. So, I mean, it serves a purpose without a doubt. And, um, but I do want to say having health coached a lot of people, I've seen incredible transformation when they've gone from zero to a hundred to whole food plant-based, no oil and completely reverse, like drop their cholesterol by like a hundred points, completely reverse type two diabetes. I mean, I've seen it happen, you know? And so if you can do it, great. Uh, Lauren Burnick, she reversed her heart disease. That's why she's doing what she's doing now with the well elephant. So, um, so yeah, you, you have to start where you are. That's the point, right? Wherever you are in this journey, you don't have to go a hundred percent if you're not ready to. And another good thing about it being kind of bundle week or a vegan Christmas, <laughs> as I'm starting to call it, is that you get to meet all these new people and, and see, cause now obviously if you like me, you obviously like Lisa, since we are already feeling very bonded in a very short amount of time. I'm so bonded with you. <laughs> so you know you need to go and follow her and look at some of her recipes and get ideas. And maybe you'll find some like-minded people in her community. And the same thing, like all of her Instagram and all these things are happening. So take advantage of what's going on too, to learn more figure things out. Mm -hmm. Someone had mentioned earlier that they were really loving all the lives because they're getting all these great tips. And what I will say is if you would spend $49 to go out to eat or to buy a couple of cookbooks or maybe to take a course, then you probably should buy this bundle because it's a lot of information. If you're like, oh my, oh gosh. my God, I can't deal with 120 things look through, pick out one today, maybe pick out three or four that suit you where you are today, right now. Maybe you're like, I'm trying to eat more vegetables. So look at some of the raw food recipes, or I wanna make my life easier. So maybe look at some of my instant pot slow cooker recipes or other people have meal planning in there. So, and what doesn't suit you now might suit you in six months to a year because you still have access once you download everything. I was gonna say, I mean, once you download it, you have it forever. So you can take your time going through it. And, um, and it's true, it's such an uh, eclectic, wonderful mix of contributors. And it's not just food too. There's like, um, I'm gonna be talking to Julie Latz who she has a food addiction course. And then Dr. Mm -hmm. Furman's gonna be on there. Dr. McDougall, um, he's gonna be, they are part of it. Um, I was thinking of lives. I'm like, no, they're part of the bundle. And Chef AJ, oh my gosh. 
when I saw what she contributed, I felt I was jumping for joy. I was like, because I want that information, you know? Yeah, I mean, every year, this is the second year of it. So also, if you bought it last year, one thing to know is nothing is the same. It's all new products, even though it's called kind of the same name, it's all new. So if you got it last year and you get it this year, you just get twice as much goodness for that. Um, and I, I don't know, I always find some cool things. There's like a whole yoga instructor yes. training. Yeah. yeah, there's some exercise stuff, yoga. It's incredible. It's such an amazing package. I'm I can't wait to start like after this week, you know, with all our lives and everything and the launch of We Heal. I can't wait to like really start to spend some time with it and make more recipes and stuff. Yeah, it's it's just a really good value. The thing is is that when it ends, I think it's February 12th next Sunday and you email us and say, oh, but can't you just squeeze me in? We can't. It's not our bundle no. to sell. Like we contributed to someone else's bundle. And I asked last year and it's a hard no. So if, you, mm. if you're thinking about getting it, just go ahead and get it. Just go ahead and do it and have it out of the way and you can start working on some stuff that you wanna work on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, it's a great deal, definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah, do you have anything else you want to mention to everybody or any tips before we go or something about the bundle? Um, well, again, you know, I'm excited about your contribution because, you know, I think I would like a little more practice with the, some of the kitchen um, small appliances and things like Instapot and the air fryer. So um, I'm not as well schooled. So I'm excited about yours. And um, yeah, I mean, Lauren with Well Elephant, like I said, her ACE plant-based eating, especially when you travel, if you're whole food plant-based. I've been whole food plant-based for decades and I learned so much from her travel tips. Um, and of course our book, um, because it's super simple, you don't even have to cook the recipes. There's a lot of assembly. Um, yeah, I'm excited about so many of it. I'm gonna be speaking with Vegan Inspired, another Kathy. I'm excited about her stuff because she lives in a, uh, uh, like a trailer, like a, um, what do you An call RV, it? An RV, yeah. I actually RV, was, yes. I was on her show on Friday and I think tomorrow she's on my show. She's super nice. Oh, I can't wait to meet her. Yeah. So I think it's really cool what she's doing, you know, in an RV and she's doing this in an RV. It's amazing. Oh, and one Mary two and three says even has videos on how to sprout, ferment and grow microgreens in yes, the bundle this yes. year. And Oh, I love that. I have to tell you a horrible secret. I bought a little microgreen kit last summer and I still have not done it. So maybe that'll be the kick in the pants I need. Uh, I'm sorry, but you and I are connected at the hip because I got a little microgreen green kit at least a year ago from the Buy Nothing group in Austin when I was there and it's still sitting in my cabinet. So yes, we, uh, we share a lot of uh, similarities, Kathy. That's awesome. Maybe we need to, after yeah. the bundle's done, maybe we need to do a live for everyone to go ahead and do your microgreens. <laughs> yes, yes, we'll do it together. I love it, yeah. That's um, awesome. And also, I do want to mention though, because I'm so excited about it. I've been working with Matt, Dr. Letterman and um, Dr. Day for a year, create, uh, helping them build their new uh, model, We Heal. Um, so I just want to put that out there because they are amazing and they put together this great um, healthcare uh, model really. And um, I'm just so honored to be a part of it. And I'm still you know, putting recipes up and we're making videos, but this week, this uh, is really the launch week. So if you have a chance, definitely, I'd love for you to check it out. And that's weheal.health, correct? And that's actually yes. showing below you when we're um, doing, doing Oh, this. great, okay, so, awesome. So you guys will yeah. have to type it and you can't click on the screen, but in the show notes, I have all the different links too. Kathy Richards said more than a year ago for me on her micro <laughs> microgreens. Oh, Diane. Okay, so we're not alone. Um, Diane says, hello. Fave easy quick go-to breakfast is easy overnight oats as a part of batch prepping meals for the week. And I love that. Um, yes. Because 
A lot of times I will batch prep and sometimes I won't. It just kind of depends. When I teach, I teach two live cooking classes a month, so I'm doing four or five recipes, so I kind of end up batch cooking. <laughs> Except I did a sweet breakfast class and a lot of that's in the freezer. <laughs> Right, because that doesn't oh, really I make... Wanna, I want to come over to your house. <laughs> well, that's a great I, thing. You can freeze it, right? Right, yeah. And most everything that you can't make quickly, you can double batch and freeze. And Liz is telling us microgreens are so easy to grow in an arrow garden. Oh, okay. I like that. Well, Lisa, it was just so much fun hanging out with you, and we definitely have to do it again after the bundle. Um, I can't wait. But I'm super excited and I can't wait for everyone to see your contribution and just to hang out with all of Yours us some as more. as well. I love your YouTube page. I love your videos. You're such a wonderful host and I'm really grateful to be here, Kathy. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. You guys, I am going live two more times, but on other people's channels. So if you want to kind of keep an eye out for that, I'm going to put it out in an email. So if you're on my email list, you'll get that. Um, if you look down below, you can sign up and get my four most popular spice recipes, including the barbecue <laughs> seasoning that Chef AJ loves, and then you'll get that email. The other thing is you can join the Heartbeat group that's free below, and it's just a way of us not being on Facebook because Facebook is making me testy. <sighs> We could have a whole other conversation about that as well. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's like I have almost 10,000 people in my group and a, they show stuff to 100. So it just doesn't yeah, give people a chance to get this good information. No. Um, and make sure that you're following Lisa and then you go to some of the links and definitely check out weheal.health and look at all of her yummy recipes there. And we'll see you guys somewhere, I'm sure, very soon. Okay, have a great yes. rest of your day. Yes, have a wonderful day. Thank you, Kathy. I'll see you soon. Okay, bye, everybody.